Hey, my name's Bruce Snell. I'm with BSG International. In today's class, we're going to be working on the Base Work Center startup. What this class is focused on is looking at the Base Work Center, looking at your job, how in the world you're doing it, and how we go through and start organizing and defining your Base Work Center. Let's kind of go back and recap kind of how we got here. If we look at part one, we were talking about working through the four barriers to quality. And when we're looking at the four bears, we also want to be thinking of, too, how these four bears interact with our base work center, as well as the development of our base work center. A structured base was part two, and what we looked at there was setting up to start getting into defining our base work centers. What we did was, is that we looked at defining the organizational structure, we started looking at organizational teams, then we started Went and went through the defined base work center concept. This is where I was telling you in that class that we were really going to get into how we were going to do this base work center. So the concept was laying the foundation for where we're at right now. And then uh, at the end of the uh, part two, we had the class on the interpersonal skills, looking at it why in the world each of us see and do things different. Now we're in part three, looking at the systems base in this program of looking at starting to formalize how we're doing business. We're defining the organizational systems. That's what we talked about uh, the, the, the class to begin with. Then we're looking at the base work center startup, which is uh, the, the class kind of what we're going to be doing today, which is class 10. So we're going to be doing and we're asking you to get your books out and let's look at and we're going to start defining our base work center uh, startup. What is a system? If you look at on page one, what is a system? We've talked about this before. Again, a system is the way we do things internally within the organization. All and how we do everything, we do it with systems. And remember what we said, the majority of the systems that we dealt with and are dealing with internally are informal, meaning those systems are not written and they're not basically most of the time uh, written by the people doing the job. What is a base work center? We're saying here a system, again, is the things and way we do things internally, formally or informally. A base work center is your job, your area of expertise and control. Here, the base, the foundation of your work, the center of your work. So we're going to look at the goal, quality that can be defined, managed, planned, scheduled, monitored, and continuously improved. The equality of people through process. Someone asked me the other day, what do you mean by equality of people through process? Reason we have a lot of the double standards, hidden agendas, and all this other stuff, and inequality internally within an organization is because of the lack of written procedure. Because if you look at it, we talked about the 1% that influence the five that basically affect 20% of the population in negative characteristics are masters at manipulating the informal system. So what they do, in effect, they create that inequality internally within the organization. By defining those systems now, what happens is, is that now we're holding those folks accountable that are taking advantage not only of the organization, the systems, and its co-workers, but we're now holding them accountable for what uh, basically we call the two rules. Do what's morally and ethically correct and treat everybody as you want to be treated. Then when we have the systems and the processes defined, we're moving from an emotional now to a data decision instead of pointing fingers and hearsay. Let's now look at uh, page number two. Page number two, we're going to be looking at the base work center process and step startup of non-management. The goal for the base work center is come to an agreement on a formal process and steps of how I start processing my order request and how I end my day. What we're looking at here is we're going to start looking at defining that base work center, that process and step of that non-management. I won't go in what's the difference between management and non-management. We'll cover uh, the office and manager a little later on in this workshop here. Let's look at my base work center process, the startup focus, uh, agreement to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor. The goal is, the, uh, if you look at it, is the goal is for you to reach the decision for what your base work center really is. Let's turn to page two and let's kind of look at the form and let's talk about that. 
We're saying here, remember, we've talked continuously throughout this whole program that all of us in the organization is supporting some part or processing some part of our order request internally. So the base work center, remember, we said the system is made up of processes and the processes are usually have a, a base work center that are accountable for those processes. So we're going to focus in, remember all the systems, we're going to break them up by processes and now we're going to pull a base work center out here and look at and walk through as we define what a base work center looks like. So in that, we have to look at that, uh, that relationship between that base work center and that process. So if you look here on page two, it says, my base work center process. Remember, we're processing and supporting some part of that order request. So we're bringing it in here, and we're saying the start of the day. And I won't get into this till we walk through the process to explain some things. It says the start of the day. No matter what that order request is, we're saying this process, this step has to be the same and we have to agree on that. So we're saying most of us come to work and we get started. What is that formal process in order to get started? We're saying here, here are some of the suggestions on page two on what we need to do to start the day. How do I get started to prepare for the day's work? Are there any things internally like, or internally like turning on the copier, warming up the, uh, the, the copier, or turning the lights on, starting coffee, or whatever you want to look at. The receipt of the order request. So number one, we're saying here that I'm coming to work, and I'm going to say just worst case, best case, I'm going to come in, I'm going to clock in. And that's kind of going to start the day. Then we're saying the receipt of the order request. How do I receive my internal supplier, external customer, my work in, in the form of an order request. How do I receive that? Where do I get my marching orders from the day? Because remember, I'm either going to start the day working on that order request. And my job, let's just look at this non-management. One part of it, let's look at one base work center, is that I'm taking that external order and now I'm bringing it in. So who do I receive that? Where do I get it from? Okay, is it in an order or job box? Or do I have a boss that assigns me my work that day? So we're asking you here, who and how do you receive your day's work? And maybe it's already planned out for you. It's probably not, but we're asking you, you clock in, who do you get your work from to get started? Now, from an internal uh, request, we're saying here, I'm internally within the organization and I'm going to receive my request from my internal supplier, meaning that could also be my boss on who I get and how I get my direction to start my day. Now, this could also be that we could in, internally be within an organization that we have, uh, let's say, a shop that is now requesting parts uh, from warehousing or from inventory. So that's an internal uh, request their customer and supplier relationship. So we're asking you, number one, how do you get started? Because remember, we said we have to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor. And how we do this is with the data entry and collection of all these things that are happening. So number one, we want to look at how do we manage me? How do we monitor what's happening with me and my report from management from their reporting based work centers. The receipt of the order request. So I come in, I clock in, and I receive my work. So I'm looking at how do I do that. So that's your first step, is look at who do you receive your work. Now, if you get into this and you're going, well, I, it depends on who happens to be there that day or what fire, this is where we were talking about a while back of defining the organizational structure. If you're getting your work or your uh, work order, uh, from everybody in the company. Believe me, there's a problem in that because that creates a whole bunch of other issues. Now, it could be, you could be getting it from department heads, but that's not like everybody in the organization because that will set up in that process. We're asking you, who do you get your work from and how do you get started? Okay, so let's just say I've clocked in, I've received my work, now I have to process my part or support. 
We're saying we're processing. I've got that order or that request. Now I do what I was hired to do on that. How do I provide my product service to process the order request? If your base work center provides more than one product or service, just list the one that you are best at for all base work center team members have the same process and steps. The difference is inserting the different jobs expertise. Okay. What we're looking at here is just defining really the process. We're not looking at defining the skill. And I'm going to go to, uh, well, let's just look at it as a computer operator. We're saying here is that really the process is you're coming in and processing the accounts payable. Right now, we're not really asking what are all those skills that you need in order to do that. We're looking at the process. We're not trying to define the skill right now. You're going to insert that. So we're saying, let's look at, if nothing else, the paper process. I received my work. I'm now processing it. So if nothing else, I will download data, or I will grind down a wheel, or I'll pull inventory, or whatever we're saying is that we'll define how we do that. So if you do a lot of different things, first of all, let's agree on the process that you do the majority of the time, or the most important, and define that in this processing. Example, I might get an internal request, let's say, so I've got to go and pull parts. So I, re I receive my request, I go, I check the computer, I go and pull the part, I go and check the, against the work order, I do this, 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 and this. Okay, then I give it back to my, let, let's just say, in effect, my internal customer now. So what has happened, I've got my work, I go through my process, now I give it back and I have completed that process. Again, where we have a little issue in here is that as if we have operators in larger companies, well, let's say a machine operator, as an example. A part of my job or base work center is I have to operate a truck, a backhoe, a front end loader, a dozer, um, uh, asphalt spreader, or whatever. We're saying that it doesn't matter which one of these skills that you talked about. The process is going to remain the same. We'll come back and define those skills later, but what we're doing in this initial base work center startup is just trying to get the process down. Because we'll, you know how to do your job, we're just trying to give you the support of the system to do that. So we're looking at the process and not the skill definition. Then we're saying after we've done our process, we now hand it back and we call that the delivery of any completed order request. Where do I deliver the product service to my internal, external customer of my work processed of the order request? Now that's saying a, a lot right there is that I've received my work, I process it and go through it. Now I give it to my internal customer, or it could be my external customer. It depends on where I'm at in the organization. But right now, we're just going to say give it to our internal customer. So I've processed it, gone through it. Now I give it to the next person in that chain. So now I've processed and done it. Then we're saying the delivery. We have given it to my internal customer. So if you look at what happens now on most base work centers, after I've processed that order or that request, I now start it over again. I go back, get another job order, work order, or whatever you want to call it, do the same process, and then give it back to my internal customer. And sometimes your internal supplier and customer, who you get your work from and who you give it to or your, is, a same, is the same person. And that could be more than likely your supervisor. Depending on where you're at in the organization and what particular job that you're doing. So again, we just repeat that throughout the day. So remember, we're saying my job right now is non-management. I'm processing or supporting some part of that order request. I do this throughout the day and that's what we're listing. Then at the end of the day, we're talking about here, how do I close out the day's work? Now, do I have to clean up? Do I have to put the tools up? Do I have to shut down the computers? Do I have to run day in uh, on, in regards to hours or units process? What are those things that I have to do every day at the end of the day to call it a day? And at the end of it, we're going to say you probably clock out or log at least your time or the orders that you processed.
And so if you look at this, we want to look at developing that base work center, that process and step of non-management. Let's step back again. What is it that we're doing? Let, I'm going to go over the goals that we had mentioned earlier of that. We're saying the first, list the paper process of the data entry collection and reporting of the day's work. We're saying here in that base work center is that we have to lift, list the paper process and the data entry because that's how we're going to collect to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor the day. In this, we're going to look at what are all those forms and paperwork. Remember, that's going to suggest our systems and our processes. Second, if your base work center process and steps can be described as steps one through five above, start to define the process. We're looking at that is that I'm getting my job, I'm receiving it, I've got to either now, let's say that I'm, I'm going to just say, again, like an operator mechanic. I got to pull parts. I got to inspect the work. I got to make a decision. I have to fill out a work order. Now I start the job. Okay. That is what we're talking about, a base work center process. We also want to be looking at all those forms that we've been asked to collect before we get here. Where are they at in that process? Remember the data entry and the forms is for the collection and the management and monitoring of everything that's happening internally within the organization. So it says here we want to just define those steps, the initial startup, who do I receive it from, or how do I start my day? Do I have to basically go in and turn the copier on? Do I have to go in and start warming the truck, fuel the truck, uh, put on work clothes? What is it I have to do? I clock in, then I receive my work. Who am I receiving it from? It, is, it my, is it a job order, work order, off the computer? Is it from my supervisor? Then I go through the process, and if it's like short work orders or whatever, I'm continually repeating those steps of receiving that work order and going through it. The process stays the same, but what we're doing, we're in the middle of processing that are supporting that order request. And we're saying the paper process. So then I'm through the end of the day. Now I've got to look at how do I end the day? Do I collect the data of the day's work? Uh, do I turn off the equipment? Do I run day in reports? Uh, and then at the end of it, or do I clean up the work area? And then what we're saying is, is that then I just, if nothing else, clock out and turn in my paperwork. So third, if, if as an example you're an operator that as an equipment, uh, as a requirement for your job, you can operate several types of stationary and or moving pieces of equipment. The defining of the skills on how to operate will come later in the program. And how we'll do that, you remember we talked about if I'm an operator, and I'm using this as an example because it's really kind of a clear example that we can relate to. This paper process or startup process is really laying down the data collection of what I'm doing to formalize. Because as an example, in one of our companies, we had a lot of trucks that were going out daily. And we had 40 or 50 trucks and uh, truck drivers. So what happened was we were looking at the what we call initial inspection. They're saying, OK, how do we get started? They're going, oh. How about the initial inspection? Somebody goes, well, I fill out this inspection, the visual or the walk around at the end of the day. Some said, well, I do it at the beginning of the day. And somebody goes, oh, I said, well, what do y'all want to do? They said, it doesn't really matter. I said, well, we can't have it that way. We got to make a decision. Of course, then that blew up and everybody got all excited because remember the fear and stuff like that. I actually called the Department of Transportation and what they said was, is that we had to do it at the beginning of the day because if that truck went out, it was basically illegal. So there is. There even might be legal requirements. That's why we have to agree on it. We can't have some doing it one way and some doing it the other. This is where we were talking about coming into an agreement in that base work center. And that's where we're saying that come heck or high water, we're going to agree on how to do that. So again, if you look at it, they agreed on that process, and we're talking about the, the, the startup process is literally looking at defining that system, and we're plugging in our expertise and stuff. So here again, it says we're going to list the proficiencies and skills of e, the base work center requirement. 
Later on, we're going to be looking at this base work center, and we're going to look at, okay, what are those skills that I need? Is, do I need Windows? I need Windows 101, 102, or do I need uh, uh, WordPerfect? What are those things I need in order to have my job? Complete your paper process of your base work center. This is what we're talking about. Let's look at all those things that we're doing internally in that organization, in my base work center, to create that startup process. Next, insert the skill into the base work center agreed upon process. This is what we're talking about. Let's map the process out, and if we have a lot of different skills or proficiencies, we'll add those in, but we'll do that later. The first thing is, is to get the initial startup base work center. Because by doing that, we're starting to learn how to write process step and procedure, and without getting too technical yet, and we start lining up the organizations and the base work centers. Okay, now let's look at page number three. So that's what we're talking about for the non-management, the base work center process and steps startup. Now we're going to be looking at base work center startup process of the office manager. Now we told you that the office manager are really the tough one out there uh, to define because remember, how in the world did we get to be a manager? If you, <laughs> if you remember, we got to be a manager usually because we're good problem solvers. We were ones that were able to take issues, we fix them, work through the organization, get everybody going, and then all of a sudden here, we were managers, and what happened, most of us evolved internally within the organization as a manager with no systems to support us. And so what's happening here, as we get into these organizations, it's really tough for us to find the management base work centers. And here's going to be some guidelines, and reason we call it uh, office manager because there's some same similarities between the office and the management in regards to those base work centers. The office base work center, the base work center usually revolves around processing the organization's product or service. Our support it. this includes answering phone calls, taking order requests, processing reports, assisting your facilitator manager, data entry, special events, putting out fires. Has anybody here ever had to put out any fires? Yeah, we all have. And then budget processing, replying to internal, external requests, and are reacting daily to current events or actions. So from an office-based work center, it's not necessarily like it's a, a, a process and step, what we're talking about in regards to our non-management. But what we have, I'm just going to take as, a, as an office, uh, as an example of a base work center. The type, we would list that and we would say, under this base work center job we have in the office, we're going to say, I, I, I'm going to say we answer phones, uh, we take orders, and the other one is that I help process paperwork for my boss. So what we're saying are those are three different work centers. We're going to ask what are the priorities of that, and if they all important, because what we're saying Remember, the whole thing is, is that the base work center is your area of expertise. So we're saying, come heck or high water, you're going to be held accountable for that base work center. That's why it's so important to agree on it, because we're saying, what do you want me to do? Answer the phone or take an order? Or do you want me to support my boss's paperwork? Or do you want me to do the quarterly report? Well, I might have to do all of those. So what we're asking you to do is to list all of those, and you would list those, you know, answer the phone, process uh, paperwork, do, I'm going to say day in, accounts payable, accounts, accounts receivable. Well, those are all a part and required of that base work center. We are responsible for all of those. Now, what we do is just list those. Then what we do is that we go back through here, and then, then we do the processing step. So what we have to do first is start organizing in that office environment all of those things that you're doing. Now, if you're in a support position internally within the organizations, and there's a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, computer companies out there, well, there's a ton of support people internally that are processing these orders and these sales. Our first thing is, what is it that you're there to do? And the best thing to do is to try to focus it in on that process and step, if you can. 
If not, it might take listing several key things that you're held accountable for, and then you develop that process. First of all, let's sort through it, and we'll kind of come back to this in a second. Next, let's look at the management-based work center. Now, y'all, this is really a hard one here uh, to do because most of us, what we were talking about, don't have a formal system. So what we do is literally go put out fires all day long. And when there's no system to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor, what is it that we're going to be managing? Okay, this base work center is usually the hardest to define because most management has evolved as good firefighters and problem solvers with, with little formal training and informal system to manage. The management usually has a lot of the same involvement with the uh, office-based work center. What we're looking at here, the management-based work center, is, is that it's not like that process and step stuff, what we talked about the non-management. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to skip down and go through these real quick, and then we're going to get to the bottom of page three, and which we'll come back and focus on that manager. Three is leadership goal. The leadership throughout the uh, base work system 2000 must help define the systems to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor organizations, people, and processes. That's a... That's a very strong statement there. We're saying, remember, the training leadership is literally all management internally. So what are we here to do? We're here to manage that reporting. Remember, we talked about those reporting-based work centers. Okay, what are we wanting to manage about those reporting-based work centers? We want to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor what in the world we're processing or supporting. So that's going to help us start lying out on what we need to do. Management of systems. Listed below are some suggestions on getting your arms around your office management base work center. Okay, here, this system here, if you look at it, it says base work center questions. Th this is a form that helps you organize your thought. How do I uh, basically manage, plan, schedule, and monitor, and budget? The order, the request, the manpower, the machine, the materials, the methods, and again, the budget. If you're looking at this from the management standpoint, we want to be looking across this form and look at all the base work centers here that, that are reporting to me all the way down in the organization one level. And we want to look across this and say, okay, how am I managing those order requests? And most organizations have an accounting process that will help us tell us how many, example, how many orders we processed, how many we put out, how many parts are on order, all the stuff that's happening internally. So what we want to do is manage and plan, schedule, and monitor those order and requests. Then, as we're starting to manage and plan those, now we can look at moving on down and looking at the manpower, machine, materials, and methods. So my question back to, to y'all is, is that what is the existing forms or paperwork or reporting uh, reports that we do have to help us do all of this stuff? That's what, as managers, we need to be doing. We need to be managing the organization and leading the organization. The only way we can lead them is with systems and with processes that we can say, okay, we're either up or we're down or this thing ain't working, it is working. And then that's how we kind of keep our thumb on what's all happening. Because example, if the production is down, our first question other than to beat the person to death is, is to ask them why, is, why didn't we get it out? What you'll find most of the time is, is that we didn't have the, the inventory or somebody didn't order something and there was a breakdown in that informal system. By starting to manage all this, this is going to give us some direction on what we need to do in order to get a handle of the organization. Some closing thoughts. A lot of times as we get into these companies, these uh, office workers and management, we, we can't even remember or try to figure out what we were there to do. So we ask, what were we, what were we hired to do? What was the reason I was hired? Why am I here? That way is at least a starting point. What we're talking about there is that what were you hired to do? And remember, especially if you're a good worker, that job started expanding. 
that's where we get into where we start dumping on the people that are performing and then all of the sudden now we're overloaded and we're working day and night and all of a sudden we're not accomplishing anything and stress is happening. Management. Develop systems to manage and plan, uh, manage, plan, schedule, and monitor the four M's. So what we need to be doing is looking at, and this is why the, all the management has to be involved, starting with the top, because we're collecting this data. No matter how and where you're at in the organization, even if we're way front line and we're collecting or processing, that data is downloaded or collected somewhere and then it works up the system because that's how we manage the organization. So if you look at this, we want to look at the systems to manage. And there's some things that we have in a, a workshop seven that what we talk about, really what are the key things we want to manage? Well, it's really our people, it's our time, and then we want to look at usually what units and stuff that we've processed or planned or that are still in production or didn't make it or whatever it is. But those are the, we're wanting to look at and track, manage, plan, schedule, and monitor our people and our order request. Okay, so that's our base work center startup process. Okay, if you want to look at it now, we've talked again about a lot of stuff. Let's look at here the defined base work center worksheet because again when we get into these organizations it's been so informal we're asking everyone here to take this this worksheet list your department name on there so as we're in training and everybody is receiving this workshop we want them to put what is your department name put the date and then we want you to put your base work center name what is your job or job title or whatever you call your job? And don't worry about the base work center number right now. And then we want a team member. We want you to put your name there. And if you're assigned in a team, remember a uh, little ways back we talked about breaking the organization up in the teams. And what you're going to see is now why we had to define those systems. If you look at the start, when we started defining the organization, we started defining the systems that started setting up the base work centers. That's why we're doing it. And then we started setting up the teams on and around the base work centers. And this is why we're doing this now, because now we've kind of been raking through all this stuff. Now we're focusing in on our base work center. So here we're starting to define our base work center. So probably what we want to do is pull in those teams and start looking at defining that base work center worksheet. We're going to ask you to list the things that you do daily. Now remember, this is where the 1% goes nuts because they start listing everything in the world and they're getting real sarcastic and they're going to say, well, I do everything. Well, we're going to just list it. They're going, well, that's going to take me all day to list what I do. Then do it. We're saying here, if we try to argue or defend or justify or whatever with this person, we're not going to win. So we're just saying, you do what you think is right based off of our two rules and what we're trying to accomplish. We're saying list it. So out of that, we just start listing. And the best thing to do here is to list them and keep this form on your desk and keep it on there at least for a minimum of two weeks. And then as you go through and start defining, just keep it on your desk. Each day or each time you do something, list it down. Because what that's going to do is start showing you what's happening in your base work center. And then we're going to be able to take the data, collect it, and start coming to an agreement on it. If you look up top, it says list the duties. So we're going to list them. Then we want you to ask and look at yourself, is that A, is it daily? Do I do that particular thing daily? Is it B, weekly? Am I doing that thing weekly? Is it monthly? C, D, is it a priority? Or are there priorities? E, what are the requirements? Is it, is, do I have requirements for this job? And what we're saying here, that F is a, as needed. Now what you're going to see is that the majority of this stuff up front is as needed because we're so unorganized, everything we're doing is putting out fires. So if you're looking at, let's just list it and then go back and try to be truthful on here. 
Is it daily, weekly, monthly? And are there priorities and requirements? And is as needed. Now what you're going to see is that that's really going to start shaping up what that base work center looks like. Okay, so that's to find the base work center uh, and everybody should be doing that one. Okay, now let's look at page five. Okay, as we get in this and we start working on trying to define our base work center, here, here is a good form to get it going. We want to look at here, again, the startup form, the worksheet. We want to put the date up top, the day we started the form. Then we want to look at the department. What product or service do I provide? Now, y'all think that's easy, but it makes us start thinking, why are we here? What is it that I'm here to do? What product do I do? What service do I provide? And it really takes a lot of thinking to really put down a good, tight statement. And we've got a checklist there. Is it production? Is it service? Is it processing? Is it supporting? What is it that we're here to do? What product or service do I provide? Now, is that internal or external? It could be either or, or both. We're asking, what is it that you're doing for the company? Because again, that's going to make us think. We've been hired, we've been brought in, and we've never really been asked to think about what it is that we're doing. So if you look at B, we're looking at base work center. What this B section is, is that for this base work center, we're going to ask you to list all the team members or all the employees that have that same base work center. Now, what you're going to hear, you remember the warehouse story? The warehouse story is what's going to happen here, and that everybody thinks their job's different than everybody else. But what we're going to say is, is that this base work center is that by collecting that data and starting to focus in, is that we're going to have to come to an agreement on what that base work center. So if you look at that, that in itself is going to have to start coming through to some agreement as your team members' awareness grows. So right here, it might be a little tough, but if what we're asking you to do is list all the team members or all the employees that have the same base work center. Okay, let's now look at C, suppliers, external. We're just asking you here to list in your base work center who are some of our external suppliers that we use their products or whatever, or materials, whatever you want to call it, our services in my base work center. Now, why do we do this? You won't believe as the organization changes we have people leave and someone's trying to get apart. They're trying to figure out who, it, as simple as who's servicing the copier. Well, we're saying here, we want to list those because that will become, it might seem like it's no big deal, but believe me, if you're a new employee and you have no idea who in the world we're getting to service our copier, it can save you a lot of time, energy, and effort. And also, too, it can save our copier. So we're asking you to think of who is our external suppliers? Then we're also asking who is our uh, internal suppliers. Remember what internal suppliers are. External suppliers are external uh, outside of the organization. Internal is internal suppliers. Who are we getting things or our work from or uh, let's just say inventory from internally to help me do my process. So that's what we're listing there. We want you to list your internal, external suppliers. And again, that's going to make you think. The ones that are most relevant to your base work center. Also, let's look at the customer internal. Okay, number one is, who in the world internally do I give my completed work to? After I go through my base work center process and steps, who do I give my completed order or request to or, uh, the, as I've processed it? Then we want to look at uh, customers external. We want to look at who are the organization's external customers. Now, we might not ever get out there and do nothing with them, but what I discovered, it's really kind of interesting how many of us get in to these companies and we don't really know who it is buying our product and service. What we're saying here is that we want to have an awareness of who our customers are throughout the organization. Because what we're saying is, if that customer's buying from us, we want to buy from them. And so if you look at it, we want to make sure that we do and understand who our external and internal customers are. 
if you, again, I guess if you look at it, there's nothing better than when you're going out there and you stop by that customer and say, hey, my name's Bruce Snell. Uh, Y'all buy our product and service. I want to just stop by and tell you thanks for doing that. And man, that goes a million miles. And you can't do that enough. Then we're looking at here, we're going to ask as we get started in here, through this process, as we start formalizing the teams in the base work center, at the beginning of the program, we ask the steering committee, which we mentioned earlier in the program, we ask them to write a mission statement and goals. So what we're saying is the organization is, is writing their quality statement and quality goals, or like the mission statements. And then we're saying from a team, what is it that I need to do as a team, as a base work center, as an employee to help support the company's uh, quality statement and goals? So this is where the, the work group or the base work center lists their goals and they also list their mission statement. What is it we're here to do? Next is, is that if you look at over at I where it says base work center process and steps, we're going to ask you, now remember, we're looking at this particular base work center as the startup, meaning that, remember, I talked about I receive my work. Who do I receive my work from? So we would list that right up at the first one. I receive my work from my, let, let's say, my manager. Next, what do I do? Okay, then I take it and I do an audit to make sure I've got all the parts and stuff I need in order to do my processing. So right here, this is where we start flow charting what that process and step is of my base work center. So what we're asking you to do is to pull everybody together that has that base work center, start looking at your suppliers, both internal and external, internal, external customers, now looking at the work groups, and now remember back we talked about in that systems class, now we're talking about here starting to find that base work center process and step. Okay, the startup process, remember, is how do I get started? How do I clock in? What are the things I need to do at the beginning of the day? Now I want to add what are those things I'm doing in my job to process or support that order or request. After I complete that, what I do, I turn my paperwork in or I turn the widget in, whatever it is, then I go get another one or I, whatever it is. And then at the end of the day, what do I do? I have to clean up, I have to run the reports, I have to collect my paperwork, I have to download it into the computer, I have to turn off the, the, the lights, then I clock out. So that's what we're looking about. Get your base work center and you're going to see 101 different interpretations. And you wouldn't believe, it sounds real simple, but we actually have uh, uh, literally arguments that start in some of these companies because some are washing up on the clock or some are dressing on the clock, some are not dressing on the clock, some believe you should do it, some believe you shouldn't do it. So what happens is, by coming to an agreement, this is how we're all going to do it. And so it seems very simple, like, ah, who would get upset about that? But remember, when you're dealing with the four barriers, it's just like, okay, who's going to sweep? That's no big deal, anybody sweep. But all of a sudden it's not getting done, or you're the only one doing it, then all of a sudden it does become an issue. So if you look at this, we want to come to an agreement on what we're doing with our coworkers. And then by our coworkers getting involved and coming to a consensus agreement, then we're going to have a process and step that we can manage, plan, schedule, and monitor. Now you're going to be asking what's going to be happening to the 1% that's in this deal right now, or the let's say the 20%. Now what's happening here with them is a lot of them basically right now will not necessarily get in and start getting involved in this process and we expect that but what we don't want to do is get them to derail the process is that if they start coming in and saying hey no that's not and they start disagreeing with everything and they have a tendency to do that start disagreeing with everything that we're doing what we want you to do is say hey will you go ahead and dra draft the process and step or you go ahead and write the procedure. 
what you're going to see is that they're going to run and they're not going to do anything. But what we don't want them to do is derail what and how we're doing business and where we're going as an organization in defining our base work center process and steps. So whether they participate or not, it doesn't matter because as an organization, we're continually moving forward. And we'll, we'll have some things on a quality issue workshop later on how to address that. Let's look at now additional duties. Let's list. Okay, now we're starting to put together and agree on our process and steps. Now, do y'all remember that form that we had to find Base Work Center Worksheet? We want to look at that form and say, okay, these things here on our ba uh, defined base work center worksheet, number one, are they included in these process and steps? Number two is, are they on my defined base work center startup? Is that on, is it daily, weekly, monthly priorities, and are, what are those requirements? And sometimes it's really good, too, to lay out the requirements first. What are those things that I have to have in regards to skills or certification or whatever you want to call it to be proficient at that job? So sometimes, too, it's a little easier here just to do that. So we're going to ask you to go back and check, and check back and forth on your startup. But once you really start gaining the awareness of what we're talking about on the base work center, you, uh, your teams will move through it pretty good but there's going to be a heck of a lot of discussion on it. Okay, let's look now at the next page. All right, the next page, remember we had kind of started putting together and that uh, uh, what we call that uh, defined base work center startup worksheet. That startup worksheet was just starting to lay out these things that we were talking about that are a part of our base work center. Let's say that's laid out a real good map for us now. And now we want to start working on that base work center process and step. Does this look familiar? Yeah, this form here looks just like that one we were dealing with over in the systems workshop. Why? Because again, it's flow charting, it's process mapping, it's the process and step of my base work center. So again, we're looking at this is why we're saying that all employees have to have these base skills because if we're going to break the organization down and get control of it, we all have to have these base skills. So now you're seeing here that we're starting to work now and apply these skills that we've been uh, learning over these last uh, few classes. Here we want to say up at the top it says base work center process and steps four. Let's, if nothing else, let's just call it for an operator. Okay, we want to put the employee's name that's filling this out, and we want to put the date, remember the date of the form, the date that it started, and then we want to put the uh, procedure number, if there is one, and that'll be assigned later on in the, in, as, as we move through the program, and then also to the base work center number. So if you look at, now remember, look on page six, this is what we're talking about, is that we want to look at and start literally putting the process and steps of my base work center startup. Who do I receive it from? What do I do at the start of the day? How do I get started? And we want to agree on that process. That's why we call it the startup. In that, we'll all start agreeing on what we're doing in that particular base work center. Then as we're agreeing on it and moving through, we'll list the steps and list what that process is. Then we're out to the right, we're going to look at, is there a procedure needed? Okay, if there's a procedure needed, then we need to write one. But first, before we start writing procedures, we want to come to an agreement on this process and step. Now, again, this startup process and steps, not necessarily concerned with the processing or the skill of how you do that job, but what we're really concerned with is the startup process of how you get started daily because we want to agree on how we do that. And in that, we want to make sure we have all the data collection in that process that we can get and those steps because that's going to build the process and steps of that base work center that we're all going to have to adhere to because remember, that's how we manage, plan, schedule, and monitor the organization. Okay, now let's look at uh, page number seven. It says base work center procedures. 
Okay, you remember page six, we talked about process and step. Okay, we're saying if there was a procedure needed, okay, where are we going to write that procedure? We're going to write it on this form. And it says procedure solution four, let's just say base work center operator. And then we want to look at here again listing all of the base work centers. Now this form can also be used as down the road is when we start problem solving. Is it from a problem statement or what? So in this, if nothing else, we're just going to list is that what is the reference step from that process and step and then we're going to start list the procedure. And then the most important thing is is that we're going to list all the base work centers that are involved or touch that procedure. Now why are we doing that? We're doing that again because when we go to fix it or change it or improve it, we got to have everybody involved in and come to an agreement on it as well as not only up front but as we continually improve the organization. Okay, now let's look at page number eight. Now page number eight is the office management order, uh, order request log. Now if you look at this thing here, what we're doing here is mainly for the uh, mainly for the office, but the management can also use it. Is that we want to log what in the world we're doing? Because one of the some of the most frustrated folks in the organization are the ones that are processing or supporting in the in the office environment. So we're continually dumping things on them. And remember, if we got that one percent or whatever. They're dumping all their work on them and all of a sudden they're working night and day and never caught up. So what we're talking about this form is, is that we really want to log those internal uh, order requests. We want to look at what are we doing. We're going to log, or this could be, if, if it's more complex, this could be used as a log and a schedule form. So if you look at that, uh, it's looking at my organization name. We'll just put log schedule for, I'm going to say receptionist, let's say and division, department, what is that base work center name? We'll say reception. Uh, employee name, we'll put their name, and then the department name, and then we'll also put the day, week, month, and year, this time, because this log is going to help us manage, plan, schedule, and monitor our order requests, whether they're internal or external. We're going to start managing all these things that are happening that's coming through my base work center, whether I'm in uh, an office or if I'm a manager. Then we want to have, it says here, the log number. What we want to do is just put the log number, a uh, reference number, if it's coming off of uh, like a work order or purchase order or something like that that already has another reference number. And we're saying here it's required, scheduled, and completed. This is an interesting thing here. We want to make sure that when the, the deal was required, and when was it scheduled and when was it completed? Because this is going to start showing us, are we meeting the current uh, terms and conditions of acceptance? Then we're going to write what it is. And then over to the right, we're going to say who requested it and what are the comments and what is the time. And then we're going to say, uh, number one, the requestor and what department and whatever other comments. So that's a log to help us manage those order and request and all these things that are coming through our base work center. So the base work center startup is really starting to try to get a handle on all these things that are happening uh, internally in the organization that's affecting your job and also too affecting the organization and the company. Now let's look at um, page number nine and that's quality director. Now this is really interesting. If you go, uh, to give you an idea kind of where they put a quality director now, Y'all go into the local classifieds in your newspaper and look. Mainly a quality director or quality, they usually tag it with a quality or final inspector. And if you look at it, we're saying we really need to look at as a quality director is that we have to look at that quality director that moves throughout the organization. Not necessarily how we usually think the quality guy or the quality director is going down on the production floor, but looking at it, filling a role, filling a role, I got 
problem with that accent, is that we want to look at filling that role across of their quality as we're defining this organizational structure. That we can manage, plan, schedule, and monitor. And the life lesson is you cannot, inspect, you cannot inspect quality into the product. You have to build a good quality into the process and systems. This is what we're talking. We've got to have somebody that's managing, planning, scheduling, and monitoring this. Now, the quality director can also be one of our coordinators. It can be somebody else in the company. It could also be the human resource or the trainers. But remember, those folks are already overworked and over... Uh, 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 way overworked now. So what we want you to do is not dump it on somebody, but ask for volunteers that can help out. Also, too, maybe your training uh, uh, training director or some of your human resource people can get involved in moving this thing through the organization. But we're saying there has to be quality and someone in charge of it throughout the organization. Not that all of us, we're, we're saying we're all responsible and all of our people do want to be responsible. We have to give them the responsibility and the trust to do that. So let's look now at page number 10. That's frequently asked questions here. It says, is a base work center like a job description? Yes and no. A job description is very vague. Tells you everything under the sun, what you need to do. But it doesn't tell you how to do the job. So in effect, your uh, job description is a good start for you to start developing your base work center because if nothing else your base work center tells you exactly what your job is exactly what your additional duties are and how to do that how can you define my years of experience we're not trying to define your years of experience we're trying to give you a system to support that experience because the things that frustrate our employees is not necessarily they can't do the job, it's all the stuff around it. So we're trying to give you the system to support you in your uh, daily activity. My job is never the same. How can I define that? What we're saying there is that we got to define that startup process, how we clock in, how we process that order request, and how we uh, end up and start the day and all of that. So that will be the same. You might add in some extra skills or something or different jobs like operators or whatever, but that startup process is going to be the same. Now the skills we'll talk about later. What do you mean uh, processing and supporting? Everyone in the organization is either processing or supporting some part of that order request. We are all processing and supporting some part of that order request. Well, I answered that one. That's exactly what we're doing. The toughest thing to do is to define a management-based work center. Why? It's the least defined, and that job has just evolved. And we got a bunch of systems in there that we got to be accountable for. What do you mean management is here to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor reporting-based work centers? We're saying one level below. The reporting-based work centers, they have to manage, plan, schedule, and monitor those reporting-based work centers. Why should we log, schedule, and order request? I don't have time. Because the problem with a lot of the office and support is that they're overworked and getting stuff, and we don't know why they're all frustrated. So this is a good way to manage it. And you, the reason you don't have time, because it's not managed, and everyone around you. Can you explain breaking the organization up by base work centers? just pulling it apart by these processes. The I don't have a problem circle. As we start defining the base work center, got a problem, got a problem, don't have a problem, don't have a problem. What we'd like for you to do is think about this base work center concept, see how it ties in with the systems, and see how it ties in with the four barriers to quality. And what we're doing, we're really looking forward to seeing you in our next class and think about how daily these four barriers to quality and these lack and informal organizational systems and structures are keeping us from doing our job and holding each other accountable. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you at our next class.